Okay, so this is going to be uh, a large watercolor um, uh, from this old black and white, which was originally a postcard that this fellow sent me from Michigan. To start with, I'm going to sketch it out in pencil before I start painting. And to sketch it out in pencil, I kind of make a graph to get pretty well everything that's on the postcard in the painting that I want. Uh, although I don't actually make physical lines, I make marks on either side of the paint uh, of the paper, and, and from there I figure out where all the subjects uh, and pieces in the painting where I want them to be. Uh, the bench starts about here, and um, roughly going to sketch this in with these cross supports and bring an angle down here like this and then there's another one and we'll come down to here so one two three four five so one two three four five is right about here where I thought it would be <laughs> and so here's the next support coming up and this is how I'm going to to get the bench in perspective and where I want it in the painting. Like this. The shadows on this photograph will make a really interesting painting. I'll start on one area and then I'll get fed up and I'll move to another area. Mm -hmm. And then I'll move to another area. It's, it's a fairly straightforward process um, working from light to dark with watercolors. Because you can darken it but if you have to lighten it it's a bit of a pain. This fellow that I'm doing the paintings for likes a contrasting painting, even though it's in watercolour. So that's why I'm starting here. Then I'll work up on the trees and get into the building and then the ferry over there. An early, early, early cable ferry, <laughs> which is kind of cool. I've been mostly working on commissions. During the summer I did a number of uh, outside displays. I, I like to paint water and how light reacts with water and light reacts with objects, bolts on water and so forth, you know, but also I've done a number of paintings of about four big oil paintings of Holland Creek and that was because of the water and showing the surface of the water, maybe the rocks or the pebbles below the water, and then the light, and all that interests me a lot. It really interests me a lot. So that's why I did them. It was like Christmas Day and I was down, turning off the highway to go up Robert Street, and the sun is very low at that time of year, right? And, but it was high, I was go going into it and it was just up over the hill kind of thing, just enough to shine on the buildings and you know, driving up the hill. Wow, look at that. All those buildings were, right, the pizza place, the whole thing, all highlighted with this beautiful light and shadow. That's why I did the painting. I knew, I, I could, I knew, you know, I kind of knew in my mind what I, you know, what it was going to be, you know, what I was trying to capture there. I used to sit around and draw things around the house and I don't know why I did it in ink. Um, I mean I did it in pencil. When we were at school we did it in pencil as well, you know, but they got you to do... They mostly got you to draw in pencil when you were taking art classes, you know. You know life, still life or figure drawing and all that was all in pencil. But um, yeah, I guess the pen and ink work was... Um, stronger. I graduated to using very fine nibs, so I could get very fine lines, so it became very detailed. It's kind of obsessive in a way, but I was after something. I was after a certain effect, and, mm -hmm. and that's how all these drawings that over the years I did here, you know, evolved. I knew some people who were involved in a, a thing called Habitat Forum in Vancouver. It was to do with housing, habitat, all that stuff. I don't know. It's a big, big deal. And one of the things they had at Jericho Beach was an on-site sawmill in which they were going to cut the timbers to build the structures for this event. They asked me, they said, well, do you think you could build us this workbench? <laughs> this was, nobody would be seeing this workbench, you know. I did build it 
like, but I built it like you would like build the bloody house, like it was ridiculous. So he said, okay, Michael, well, what else would you like to do? So I said, well, I'd really like to work on the boat. And what it was, they contracted a fellow from Nanaimo who had a 50 foot landing barge and a smaller one to log salvage the logs for the sawmill. And so I um, got the job as the deckhand on that boat and worked with a, a local guy from Cedar. And we worked all around House Sound. His name was Roger Ganyan, just died. His family was well known. His mum was well known. She got Citizen of the Year in Nanaimo, all, all that, anyway. But uh, I worked with him and uh, we would tie the boat up at uh, Horseshoe Bay in the weekends. And he said, well, what are you going to do on the weekend? And I said, well, I'll just stay on the boat, you know. Didn't really know a lot of people. I knew a few people, but I was, my life was changed at that time. He said, oh, you should come over to the island sometime. I live in Cedar, you know. You're welcome to stay with me and my wife. And one day I took him up on it. And that's how I found Cedar. That's how I found Nanaimo. That's how I found Ladysmith. And as soon as I saw Ladysmith, I thought, mm, you know, that's kind of a neat town. All those old buildings sitting there. The, all the hotels are open then. Mm. Beer parlors. But, it, you know, I thought, wow, this is a neat place. So that's how... I, came here and uh, yeah, worked, on the, worked on the boats here when I arrived because I needed some, a job. <laughs> I was deckhanding on the tugs here for a local company and um, hollow towing. And yeah, they're gone now, but um, the family's still here. But uh, yeah, no, I worked, they had about four or five small tugs. And I ended up running them and a little bit. And they were all brothers operating them. But it was great, it was a real learning curve, you know, working on the booms, you know, you gotta be quick and you gotta pay attention or you're in the water. And I was in the water a lot. Did a lot of towing, towing from Polio Pass down to Couch and Bay, yeah. It was great. That's when Dolman's owned the mill. When I was on those long log tows, <clears throat> I was thinking about what I was gonna do, what I was drawing, I wanted to draw, what I, you know, that was, that was, you know, up there. About 78, I decided to pull the plug and my wife at the time said, why don't you do it? <laughs> I started drawing tugs because I was interested in them. I started drawing them in pen and ink. And I knew about the towing industry. I paid attention to it. I knew which boats belonged to who. And so I started contacting, I don't remember how exactly it all evolved, but I started contacting those the companies in Vancouver. And I was getting commissioned for drawings and Lynn would frame them and it was, we were starting to go and it was good. And then there was a bit of a recession about 1980, things started slowing down, of course soon stuff, you know, all the extraneous stuff like drawings, original artwork, don't want any more right now. And I had to go back to work. So. For a couple of years, I said I, I would say I, I worked from about 78 till 80, or around that time, steady doing it. And then I had to go back to the tugs. And in that time I realized, okay, I can't just rely on originals. So then, you know how things happen in your mind? I figured out I should make prints from these drawings. Not just of tugboats, but of other scenes around here. So that, and that evolved over time. So from about 82 onwards, that's what I've been doing. We lived in a place above Ivy Green Marina, which is Oak Bay Group Marina now, right? We lived in a little house next, beyond the trailers, and a separate piece of property that was an orchard. And there was a small house there, it's not there now, they used it for fire practice, but it was great. It was a great place, you know, we looked at the lawn, led down to the beach, you could see the boat at the marina, our boat at the marina, you know, it was idyllic. We lived there for nine or ten years. The rent started at 275. Nice. Eh? Way back in time. But all those helped an awful lot. Mm -hmm. To Our overheads weren't big. And then I figured out where I would display my work and how I would display it and how I would sell it. When you were doing your art here, was there any other artist here? There was one man, initially who gave classes, and I can't remember his name. And there was Marion Torco, who did all ink drawings of buildings in Ladysmith. 
but I think she'd already packed it in by then, I'm not sure. And th yeah, there was nobody else. There was nobody else doing anything. So there was no arts council, there was, there was no nothing. arts on the There was nothing, nothing. And you know, it's, it's just, there were other people in other communities, um, potters or whatever, you know, creating. And, but, um, and I had friends who were doing, you know, who were involved in, but, uh, yeah, there was. There were no other painters. Well, there's two sides to this. You know, mm -hmm. this is the solitary part. But when I, I forced myself to go out and sell my work because I had to, so then a different part of your mind kicks in. The part that wants to communicate, talk to people, which you have to do. You know, get commissions or whatever. And so that's. That's how it went. So there's basically two sides to you being successful. I mean, it's the talented artist. Um, yes, I can say that. And then there's the, the business person that had to kick in. Because no matter how great your talent was... If nobody's seeing it... Saw the buildings. This is a neat place. I bought a boat. Lived on my boat. When I came here before I lived on land, I lived on my boat. But as soon as I saw it, I thought, this is a neat place. Brought up, I was a pretty shy person. I wouldn't say boo to a camel or whatever, you know. But because it's your life and you're relying on yourself to feed yourself and to sell your things, and, you know, I couldn't rely on anybody else to, to you know, it, it was down to me to do it. If I, if I believed in this, if I wanted this stuff, it's down to me to do it. I'm involved in it from one side, you know, it's important to me, I know why it's important to me. But if I can look out in the bigger picture, I would say that it does bring people to Lady Smith. And, you know, what are you talking about when you're talking about art? Are you talking about pictures? Are you talking about lights? Are you talking about the light up? Or, you know, there's so many different aspects. But I would say that create the creativity is very important to the to the community, it, it helps people personally, and and I would say that it gives people who visit here uh, something to look at, something to enjoy, and the downtown waterfront gallery, of course, um, gives um, a number of artists studio space, but also an, a lot of artists um, a space to hang their work which they normally wouldn't have, and a community. Uh, to a community of other artists to talk to and to which you know some people need that some people want that you know um, so I would say it's, it, it is important um, to to the community yeah